Look, I know exactly what you're thinking after reading this video's bizarre title, but yes, Transformers, well, the first one at least, works. And there is a very specific reason as to why that is. Michael Bay's Transformers franchise is one of the most insane and unpredictable franchises around. Honestly, who would have thought a movie based on toys from the 1980s would have grossed 700 million worldwide? What Bay has done with this franchise is genuinely astonishing, and in my eyes, admirable to say the least. Now, I have a bit of a hot take for you. I think the first Transformers is my generation's Jurassic Park. Now, I'm not just saying that off the top of my head, I have genuine memories as to why I think that is. I first saw this film when I was eight, so watching this whole thing unfold for the first time was remarkable to say the least. I recently saw the fifth film in the franchise, The Last Night, a few weeks ago, and I left the theatre absolutely broken. Like, holy shit, this was a bad movie. As I was watching it, I could not believe how far we had come from the simple and effective story of a boy and his car. And that was only 10 years ago. It got me thinking, why after 10 years, four sequels, billions of dollars, and a ridiculous amount of product placement. Why do we still have such fond memories of Bay's original Transformers? Why, after all this time, is it the first film that works? I think the answer is a lot simpler than you think. The first film was about a very relatable and human story, a boy and his car. Sure, there are government officials, hackers, and soldiers involved as well, but the film's heart lies in Sam Witwicky and Bumblebee. Bay and the film's writers Roberto Orsi and Alex Kurtzman provide the audience with plenty of scenes between the two in order for us to, you know, care. I think the scene in which Sam meets Bumblebee is a really beautiful moment. No. No, 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 no! Dad! Oh, you gotta be kidding me! Yeah, I am. You're not getting a Porsche. <laughs> You think that's funny? Yeah, I think it's funny. What's wrong with you? What, you think I'd really get you a Porsche for your first car? I don't want to talk to you for the rest of the time. <laughs> oh, it's just a, a practical it's joke. A funny joke. <laughs> the audience instantly cares about their relationship because we have spent the last five or six minutes learning who Sam is. He's a loser. He doesn't have many friends, but he wants a car. He looked at me in the eye. He said, son, I'm going to buy you a car, but I want you to bring me $2,000 and three A's. Okay? I got the 2000 and I got two A's. Okay, here's the dream. Your B minus, dream gone, kaput. Sir, just ask yourself, what would Jesus do? This yellow Camaro with quote unquote black racing stripes. Bobby Bolivia, like the country, states, Let me tell you something, son. A driver don't pick the car. The car will pick the driver. It's a mystical bond between man and machine. Immediately following this, Sam finds his way to Bumblebee. As the character sits in the driver's seat, he remarks, Feels good. Bay slows the moment down as he has Sam touch the emblem in the center of the steering wheel, revealing the iconic Autobot logo. As Bolivia previously stated, Sam did not pick Bumblebee. Bumblebee picked him. That one's my favorite. Drove all the way from Alabama. <laughs> In a move that screams Michael Bay, Sam's crush is Megan Fox, or Michaela. She's a popular girl at school, and she is, in every sense of the word, out of Sam's league. However, now that Sam has Bumblebee, what could possibly go wrong? After a party by the lake, Sam spots Michaela walking home by herself. The character, in all his awkward glory, remarks, So listen, I was wondering if I could ride you home. I mean, uh, give you a ride home. After initially ignoring him, Michaela hops into the passenger seat. The two have a nice and quippy conversation that shows how down-to-earth Michaela really is. Michaela puts on a facade. There's, you know, more than meets the eye with her. Get it? It's a great little moment that gives the audience an insight into the chemistry the two characters have. Michaela at one point remarks, I can't believe that I'm here right now. To which Sam responds, You can duck down if you want. I mean, it won't hurt my feelings. Uh, no, no, no. I didn't mean Michaela that. laughs and shrugs the whole thing off, but... The two's conversation continues when Michaela states, 
Are you are you new to school this year? It's your first year. Sam, once more in his awkward glory, responds. Been in the same school since first grade. Really? Yeah. No. Yeah, a long time. The character then proceeds to list all the classes they have together before Michaela attempts to pronounce Sam's last name. Sam. Sam. Yeah. Sam Wilkinson. Well, with Wiki. Yeah, yeah, you know what? I'm so sorry. I just, no, it's cool. I just didn't recognize you. Yeah, well, I mean, that's understandable. As all of this is happening, the audience almost forgets that we are in a Transformers movie. Bumblebee, being the lovable character he is, attempts to get Sam and Michaela together as he purposely breaks down and begins playing sexual healing. Looking out the cakes, you know, smooth car. Oh. Listen, this radio is like, you know, it's no radio food, so. After this, Michaela storms off. Sam, in a fit of panic, pleads with his car to work, and it does. No, 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 come on, please, please, gotta work for me now, don't let her walk away, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, please, please. In a very personal moment, Sam drives Michaela home, and once there, she asks, you, you think I'm shallow? Sam, of course, remarks the most absurd compliment in cinematic history. There's a lot more than meets the eye with you. Okay. Once Michaela leaves, Sam celebrates with Bumblebee, saying that he loves this car. It's a really beautiful scene that shows the connection between Sam and Bumblebee, but also gives us a really nice backstory into Michaela. Later in the film, the Autobots are attacked by Sector 7, led by Agent Simmons. The heroes refuse to harm the humans, despite the abuse the humans throw at them. In probably the best moment of the film, Bumblebee is captured. Sam and Michaela are struggling to save their loyal friend, who is trying his absolute hardest to break free, but remain peaceful. The character's whines and moans are astonishingly human. The pain he feels is immense and real, and Sam's reaction to this is all the more crushing. The character states, Look, there's that body bag! The film's composer, the incredibly underappreciated Steve Jablonski, crafts a melody that sends chills down the audience's spine as Sam breaks away from the Sector 7 guards and rushes over to his guardian. It is a moment that shows the sheer humanity of the Transformers franchise. In this brief little scene, we learn so much about Sam and Bumblebee. We learn that despite all the might and power of being a Transformer, B is so utterly powerless, all thanks to his bravery and heroism. Now, here's where we sort of forget all of the personal stuff, because this film's final battle is bonkers. It brings together every character we have met, the soldiers, hackers, teenagers, and of course, the titular Transformers. It is a battle of good versus evil. Autobot vs Decepticon, and it is glorious. The final battle here clocks in at about 25 minutes. While some filmmakers would be terrified of a battle sequence that is that long, Bay embraces it in all his macho glory. Bay never forgets Sam and Bumblebee. They are, despite the huge battle going on, our focal point. Bay cuts back to these characters on many occasions, and it helps keep the battle down to earth and real. Without the continuous cut to Sam and B, we sort of lose focus on this film. We don't care, because it's all just CGI monsters hitting each other. Yes, Bumblebee is technically a CGI monster here, but Sam isn't. Their relationship couldn't be designed in a computer. In the dying moments of the battle, Optimus Prime tells Sam to place the Allspark in his chest, destroying himself and the cube. To Prime surprise, Sam places it in Megatron's chest, destroying the Decepticon foam and the cube. It is a moment that leaves the audience thrilled. Our hero has come an extremely long way. Sam's character evolves in such a progressive and natural way, especially considering the sheer unnaturalness of this film. When the film ends, Bumblebee finally speaks. He remarks, Permission to speak, sir. Permission granted, old friend. You speak now? I wish to stay with the boy. It is a moment in line that comes with the utmost sincerity. We have spent the last few hours with Sam and his car, and now they have saved humanity. I don't want you guys to think I'm calling Transformers a masterpiece, because it isn't. It has flaws, of course, as any blockbuster has. But Bay's first film changed the game. It showed the potential of CGI and action in ways that people had never seen before. 
So going back to the topic at hand, why does Transformers work? It's because of the emotional connection the audience has with Sam and Bumblebee that we care about anything. There could be millions of robot CGI monsters crashing and bashing into each other. But if there's no central arc, if there's no emotional connection, then what are we watching? It's nothing but destruction porn, and it's awful. The fifth film has no heart. Yes, it has human characters, but it has nothing to it. This film has a lot to it. This film's relationship between Sam and Bumblebee is something that you can relate to, despite the fact that you've never had a Transformer before. The past few films have really missed that relationship. Despite the billions of dollars in revenue, the first film is still the most well received of the lot. I think the Transformers franchise is desperate for another simple story of a person and their car. I am Optimus Prime. And I send this message to any surviving Autobots taking refuge among the stars. We are here. We are waiting. I don't think it's a truck at all. I think we just found a transformer.